Hello everyone. In this video we're going to continue our uh, explanation of the homework 4 uh, test cases. And finally we're going to cover the test cases that are specific to language Lambda S. Um, and the first thing you see here in this slide is a description of check e eval, which is used in test cases. You can see it here. This is how it's defined. It doesn't really matter how it's defined. Uh, and the test cases are defined very similarly to how we define how we defined um, the test cases for substitution with two notable changes. So let's discuss the notable changes. The first change is that you have environment, expression, and value. So the environment is the given in value environment that the given expression should run and the value should be if you evaluate that expression you should obtain a certain value as a result so this is the expected result the third parameter so let's see why this happens so why did we define it this way so if we look at how we defined um, the evaluation of lambda e terms what we see is that there are two parameters. The first parameter is this expression here. Second parameter is the E that we put right after the arrow on the right hand side, but it's still an input parameter. And this would be the output parameter, also known as the result value, right? the return value. So what we see here is we have now four cases. So your implementation of, let's see, homework four, of S eva E eval now has two parameters, input parameters that I talked about, E and the expression. Um, and the next thing that we see, we should return a value. Where was that? Okay, so now we see th four cases and let's look at how the cases are defined. Well, first one is saying if, if the expression is a value, then just return that value. So that's very similar to what we had in Lambda S. Second example, Second rule says, if the expression is a variable, so let's see how we check that. Well, we go here, uh, we scroll down. Okay, so if the thing is a variable, so we can call um, the e variable question mark function that is defined by means of this constructor. Um, so if, it's a, if the expression is a variable, then what do we do? Oh, we looked at this before, right? So this means look up variable x in environment E, right? So in homework four, we have the environment, this represents E, and your EXP is gonna be x. Okay, so we just need to look it up. How did we look it up? Look in one of the, uh, the first video that we covered, or the second, the one that talks about hash tables. Okay, so we've al already looked at how we could implement this. So n the next case would be this one, which is saying, well, if on the left hand side, the thing is a lambda, so how can we check that? Well, let's see here. Oh, we can use this. We can use E lambda question mark, like we're using it here in this case. So if the, the expression is a lambda, what do we do? We have to construct a closure. Okay, so how do we construct a closure? It's very simple. We need to call the constructor of this struct. And what is the environment? The environment's gonna be the parameter. So it's gonna be the environment that you have access to in the evaluation, right? And what is gonna be the, the, the function declaration? Well, it's gonna be your argument. So you just create an E closure and you pass env, and here you would pass the expr expression. Okay, so this is just explaining how you would implement E closure. So next is function application. And this we covered in more detail in the pre previous lesson. So I'm gonna dispense a more detailed explanation. What I want you to keep in mind is that EF and E of A, right? These represent, in homework four, these represent calling E lambda body one and E arg one, right? E of F will be calling E apply arg one to expert, right? So this here, this represents expr. And what does EF mean? Well, EF mean would be the result of E apply arg1 of expr. That is the same as E of F, okay? And the other one is 
D apply body one expert. This is the same as E of A. Uh, sorry, not body, arg one. Oh, I did it wrong. So this would be E of A. And the other one, E of F, would be um, D apply, where is func? Ah, the apply func is already given, expert equals E of F, right? Um, and then what this is doing, you're just calling recursively the evaluation. And the only thing you have to be careful is, what is the environment that you're passing? And here, note that the environment is the one obtained from this closure. So you have to pick apart the closure. You have to take the E of B. And finally, you have this map update, which we've learned in the previous video that you can do with hash minus set. Right? That's how you update this environment E of B. And the way you obtain the environment E of B, well, that's using E closure and right this field that's the field you want to obtain okay so that's basically a summary of how you would go about and implement uh, lambda E so now let's discuss a bit the examples that we see here Where is this? okay so the first one is saying if you have an environment where X is assigned to one which rule does that relate to well that's the rule E var, right? Because the left hand side is a variable. What do we do? We look up x and we see that x is bound to 1. So we need to, so when we evaluate the variable x, it returns 1. If it's a number, you just return the number itself. Why? Because here, a value, which is a number, you return it itself. Okay. So next, what you see is if you have an environment that is empty, which is what it's saying here. And if I give you a, a function, a lambda, what do you do? Well, I create a new closure that has on the left-hand side an empty environment because we gave an empty environment and a lambda. So which rule is this? It would be this rule, right? This rule right here. Okay. So next, oops. Next we want to do So next, what we want to look at, um, want to look at this example, which is saying we have again another function declaration. We don't really care what it's doing. What we want to observe is that if we have a different environment, let's say where y is bound to three, then the closure has to copy that environment. That's exactly what we're saying here. The second example is just showing you that. As you probably know, you can use brackets or you can also use uh, braces to represent this an S expression. So that's just highlighting that you could denote, you could denote um, the environment with different curly braces because in the end, this is still an S expression. So next, what we see here is finally function application. And what he's saying is if you pass lambda X and you pass it X, sorry, and you return x, and you pass to that function the number 3, you should get the value 3, which makes sense, right? Finally, a more interesting example is perhaps this one, where what you do, this is very similar to that example of factory, right? So we have a lambda x that is initialized, so the outermost lambda would be the factory, and you pass it number 3, what does that do? It should create an environment where x now is bound to 3. So intuitively, that's what you get. So now you can see here very clearly that at runtime, when you evaluate a function, so when the, the return value is a function, which is the return, this is going to be the return value of that expression, you no longer find and replace. What you have is the variable bindings along with the function declaration as a new return, um, as a new runtime value, which is known as a closure. And finally, this is a more complicated example where we pass um, some values. Oh, this is S eval. So this is showing 
oh if I pass this term then it should return 10 <laughs> just calling the same function multiple times and at the end because this is the identity it should just return 10 um, and then in this case what we see is the same example that we had with this is for language s and this is for language e so it would be the same we're just in, in the empty environment it still return 10 and then what I have here are more complicated examples and these use the church encoding which is for what for the intent of this uh, homework just means that they are just very complicated uh, terms such that there is a way to get the values and these are known return values of these of these uh, church Turing terms so basically it just means that if you want to make sure your e eval is correctly implemented, you should pass all of these examples. That's basically what it's saying. You don't really care too much about what it's saying, but essentially what it's defining is it's defining a logic, so all the Boolean algebra that you know, in terms of just using lambda functions and nothing else, just to show that you can encode the Booleans using uh, just lambdas. So you don't even need numbers. And you can even implement, there's also an, a church encoding for numbers and numerical expressions such as addition and multiplication and all that. And it can be represented in a similar manner. And there's a Wikipedia, Wikipedia page uh, linked in the slides where you can see more um, encodings. And that's it. That's it for, for today's lesson. Thank you so much for listening and hope you have fun. <laughs>